right there. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. I just it feels weird. I feel like I'm wearing a helmet. I should be playing football or something. Um, okay, so we're talking about facial recognition, right? You said you've had some experience working with the stuff. What did you feel about the technology on the field? Like again, so like you said, it doesn't it doesn't work the way they expected it to work, right? Outside of seeing it in a movie, like a Tom Cruise movie, it, we haven't seen anything work, right? And that's true because facial recognition has been around for over 10 years. People have been trying it. They've been implementing it. They've implemented and failed, implemented and maybe minorly succeeded. Oh, yes. On that, Yes, okay. So good. We'll, we'll talk about all these things. So all of your concerns about facial recognition, we believe... At any vision, we've solved the problem. Okay? So I'm going to give you a bit of an intro into the company. And that's what the first two, three slides are all about. Like, this is very interactive. I want you to talk. There's going to be a live demo. There's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of videos. So pay attention, enjoy it. Eat your food slowly so you can let it last for the whole hour if you have the time. Um, okay, so created in uh, 2015, any vision uh, is an AI company. We're not facial recognition, we're an AI company based on 20 years of artificial intelligence research, okay? Today we've got offices in New York, UK, Israel, Singapore, right? Major head offices globally. Um, our co-founder, and the reason I'm telling you this is he's a very important person in the industry. Our co-founder, um, Professor Neil Robertson, he's a director of research at Queen's University in Belfast. Him along with his team of like 30 PhDs, they research machine learning methods for visual analytics over live video, okay? So this team, they specialize in object and activity recognition over live video. That's their specialized area of focus. And Neil Robertson today is regarded as the leader in the commercialization of this computer vision research, right? So again, what his team does, they're always on the lookout to develop new analytic systems based on the world's leading and the most uh, the latest computer vision algorithms, right? That's the, that's the AnyVision story, okay? Now, with regards to AI, yes, I will tell you something. There's, we're not the only AI company in the world. There's tons of them, right? What makes AnyVision different from other AI companies is the fact that our algorithms, were designed for the real world, right? We specialize in object and activity recognition, and you will see hints and traces of this in the software that I'm gonna to demo to you uh, in a bit. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, as I mentioned, we've only been around for a few years, right? 2015 wasn't too long ago, but we've seen a tremendous amount of growth with respect to what we can do with our capabilities and our technology. So because we worked on over 300 projects globally, what's happened is the, the neural networks that we rely on for our software, the neural networks is what helps us identify persons and faces and different ethnicities and whatnot. They've been trained on data sets from all around the world. Okay, so one of the, again, prior limitations of facial recognition was that, look, this technology works for North American people but it doesn't work for Asian people, or it doesn't work for black people, or it doesn't work for people from India, whatever be it, right? And that was because of the limitations on the data set that they had on their neural networks, right? We've done over 300 projects today globally, and we have that data collected now. So our neural nets are trained with much better data, period, to begin with, right? Um, add to that the fact that we were in the news um, last month. Microsoft just backed our technology as well. They came forward, I think, with a $73 million round of funding into our Series A, right? So that's, again, it speaks volumes about what you can expect with our technology and what we can do with it, right? Uh, I'm going to play you a quick little uh, demo video just to set the mood a bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
I was just telling them earlier, I love the music that they use in these things. It's very exciting. Um, okay, so you've seen there was a bunch of information on that uh, on that slide, right? Uh, I'm going to point you guys out to a few uh, to a few specific things. Now, with regards to our technology, what it is is it's a software that can connect to any video camera, okay, and it can see what the camera can see, and what it does, it's able to identify persons of interest. So it's able to detect every face that's in the camera view. That's it. And that's what makes it good is the way that we do it. Now, I'm going to bring up some key points before I jump into what the software looks like and the capabilities. First off, you have to remember, so at the core of everything, before everything starts, we do not collect any images, right? So the software uses the mathematical vectors to identify persons of interest, okay? So what this means is it can identify people anonymously without the need to store images, okay? So there is no folder in the AnyVision system called the folder of everybody's pictures. It's all data, zeros and ones, and this cannot be converted back to the real image. You have to remember that. That's biometrics 101. It's all a biometric template, okay? Uh, today, we can work on any brand of camera. Uh, we just pull the video stream from the camera and connect it to our system to use facial recognition, okay? Uh, we can do up to, well, we can go down as low as one megapixel on the camera size, okay? So most of our deployments, we just take over whatever the customer is using, right? So if you have access cameras, two megapixel, sure, we'll use the same thing. You don't need any special lighting, and it's very tolerant to changes in angles, okay? So again, I'm kind of doing a historical comparison here. Most of facial recognition technology that we've seen up until today, they need special lighting. They need the angle to be perfect. They need the person to stand in the right way for it to work. We've addressed all of those challenges. I don't know how they do it. It's not magic. It's science, but they've figured it out, okay? Um, we're also fully integrated with um, all your video VMS systems, Genetag, Milestone, um, Indigo Vision, Vigilon, whatever you guys are using. We're also integrated with all of your access control systems that you guys are using, right? Uh, we've got privacy features built in, and we're also known, <clears throat> well, because we've done over 300 projects, privacy has always been like a really big um, sticking point, right? There's GDPR that came up recently. Canadian privacy laws also are a big concern. We've got features in our system that will help you address these concerns, and I'll show that to you in a bit as well. Uh, one really neat application, and this I find is a requirement today for anybody, not just people using facial recognition, just for anybody who's got video cameras. We have a forensic tool built into our software. This helps you analyze video footage, pre-recorded video footage, right? Let's say you have 10 hours of video, okay? And you have a picture of, let's say, Clement, this guy, because he looks like a fishy guy, I don't know. So I can upload his picture into my software. I can upload that 10 hours of video, and it'll scan the whole thing to find a match for this person, right? This is great for investigations, um, any kind of analysis that you want to do. Because the problem today is that we have way too many video cameras and way too much footage. But nobody's doing anything with that footage, right? And that's where the real challenge of you know using video surveillance the right way comes in, is when you can maybe use that video for maybe for opening doors, for security, maybe for analyzing customer movement patterns or buying behavior, whatever be it, right? 
So we're going to talk about all this stuff. Um, the one thing that AnyVision's AI software specializes in, and this is what we say publicly, is that we work well in mass crowd situations. Not, we're not talking one-to-one. -one, we're not talking one-to-many match. I'm saying, give me a full room full of people. That's where our technology works the best in a live, uncontrolled environment. These are really powerful words, right? But that's the company motto, and that's what the system is designed to do. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this once we get over some of these applications. So we've got a couple of different technologies that we've developed using our algorithm for facial recognition. We can do something like detecting persons of interest from your camera, right? You can use this camera and you can say, look, I have these five pictures of these five people. If you see them on the camera anytime, give me an alert, right? They're a suspect. Okay, you can do that. We've got the same thing for a mobile application. So you can use your phone to scan maybe your ID and it'll do a face match. It'll confirm that you are the same person, right? Uh, we're even using this technology for access control today. How? It's the same idea. If I see you and the camera recognizes you, It'll open a door or something like that. And then, of course, you have the marketing side of it where you can use all this data to create actionable insights, you know, like uh, information about uh, what people are looking at, what they're doing, the, the busy areas, all kinds of stuff like that. Okay. Um, so this is only possible. And I'll tell you this because this is a very complete portfolio of offerings. It's very complete. Nobody else can do half of these things that we do, right? The only reason this is possible is because the algorithms that we use, they do a very good job of pulling features from pixel data, right? If you're using just a small two megapixel camera, I mean, think of how much data you're actually getting from it, right? But we're able to extract the features really well. From every face that the camera sees, we can pull around 600 features. And we're not talking about distance between nose to eyes to ears, that's old school. We don't do that stuff. The camera pulled about 600 features from every face, and here's some cool numbers. So from every frame of video, we can detect and recognize up to 10 people, okay? And we can analyze five to 15 frames per second, okay? And most cameras are typically set at what, seven to 30 frames per second? Think of all the processing that's happening with every frame of video in real time. It's crazy, but we can do that, right? And that's one of the reasons why we work so well. Uh, another cool number, so maybe in like a database of a bigger system, right? 115 million users in a system, we can do a match in 0.2 seconds. Okay, so these stats are great because now it shows you larger systems don't really affect our performance. We're designed for these mass crowd situations. We constantly have faces coming in, okay? Uh, and by all means, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me and drop me, no problem at all. So we're gonna get into a demo of one of the platforms that I'm gonna show you today. It's called Better Tomorrow. What this is, is a tool, that, a photo that we uploaded. This is the match that I found, right? And I hit the watch button and it'll show you the detection when it happened. So remember that photo, what that looked like, and look at when the detection happens. Right there. That's a side profile, barely the face, 10 years ago. It was able to match that, right? The point I'm trying to make, it's not just accuracy. It's accuracy and speed combined that gives you a real world application for technology like this. Okay, and that's a very important factor because I don't think anybody's figured that out in the last uh, 10 years, right? But that's what we've done. We've cracked the case on that. So um, that's a little bit of a demo of this software. You have the live option, you have the forensic option, and you have a watch list. Your watch list could be your list of suspects, right? Uh, people you want to search for in the system. Um, there's two options with the watch list here, and that creates uh, some cool applications. You could have a blacklist, which is a list of suspects or criminals, right? Hey, when you see this person, send me an alert, right? Or you could have the opposite. A whitelist. A whitelist is people who are safe. So let's say if I add all of us on a whitelist in this room for this camera, what's going to happen is if it sees us, 
it will not create a notification. If it detects somebody else, an outsider, it'll say, hey, you have an outsider in the area, right? So it's pretty neat, it's pretty straightforward. Now, imagine the same thing, but you put this on a cell phone, right? So we've been able to um, deploy the same software that's running on a PC on a cell phone app. So now you can use your phone to do facial recognition, right? And what I'm seeing here now is things like there's an event, there's a music festival happening. Yes, there are guards walking around, but the guards can only be reactive. They cannot be proactive, right? What if you had a suspect list on your phone? You're wearing a body camera. It's doing all the work for you. You just wait. If there's an alert, see who it is and go find them, right? That's the idea that we're talking about. So, again, the fact that we can work with smaller pixel counts for the camera, smaller, uh, like, one megapixel cameras, I mean, body cams, pinhole cameras, the application, you could put, like, a pinhole camera on your door, connect it to your lock. <laughs> Upon recognition, it'll open the door, Right? So the world your oyster at this point because we have this in place. Uh, let me just get back into the other slide. Three. I think three. What? Is that three? Okay. Just... So we showed this video to um, MGM in Vegas, Aria, the big casino is there, right? They were blown away. They didn't believe us at first. They said, oh, you can do all this stuff? I don't believe you. They tried it. I kid you not, a few months later, they switched their whole system over to us. And this was like recent, I think like a few months ago, right? So what I'm getting at is what they described here is that in every frame of video, we break it down into grids. We're looking for a face. That's exactly how the software works. That's a lot of processing that we're able to do in a very short amount of time, right? And that's, I think, the secret sauce here. Yes. Um, yeah, well, we're agnostic to camera. I mean, yes, if maybe you have specific requirements, like maybe your camera is too far away from the subject, it's not going to work. You need a more powerful camera, right? But we, we're very lenient when it comes down to requirements on the field, right? Yes, 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 exactly. So it's like if you were trying to use this camera to do access control at the door, it might not be the right application because we need to see something, right? But I'm saying from that perspective, we don't need to be right in front of the door. We could be like up here, down there. You don't need the lighting to be perfect, right? And I'll show you some stuff later on that will help you understand this part better. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's liveness detection. Yeah, that's that's a good point, right? So okay, that's a great point to bring up. Liveness detection. How do you know if it's a 2D image or a real person? The truth is you don't, unless you have a liveness sensor built into the camera. There's no other way. But what we can do in this, at least for the camera application, we've got liveness detection built into the cell phone app, so we can do it over there. But on the camera side, for liveness detection, what we do is we can adjust the face size that the camera is looking for, right? So of course, I can bring my photo like right up to the camera to make it bigger, 
but it's, if I set the face size to the right to the correct uh, number, it will not be able to beat that. That's one, let's say, in between way to get over that, right? Uh, but your point is valid. Liveness detection is a really important thing. We're coming up with uh, our own device that has the sensor built in, that has liveness detection built in as well. So it's a touchscreen device, built in camera, built in touchscreen, is designed for access control, for secure access control, right? And then that situation when someone looks at a picture, uh, the system is unable to recognize that there's a bar missing. So, so great, great question. We're getting there. Just give me a few more slides. I just don't want to spill all the juice right now. We're ready later. Um, where are we? Okay. I want to touch on privacy right now because I like the questions that are coming. So I think this will help you take care of that stuff first, right? Let's get the easy stuff out of the way. So this is a little video. It shows you and it talks about the, the feature that we have built in, okay? The big thing with privacy in Canada is collection of biometric data just to try out the system, try and fool the system. So we added them to our suspect list and we send them in. That's the airport environment. That's the camera that's set up with any vision. As you can see, it's detecting faces. Um, they're populating in the back. And those two right there, they were detected. And then there's a pop-up. Hey, we found Alex, right? Now, they send them in with sunglasses on. Same person, but wearing sunglasses here. Again, same thing, they were detected, matched positive ID, right? Now with a hoodie on, <laughs> this is even better. Now they have a hoodie on, it still matched them again, right? So we say that it works, but people don't believe us a lot of times because they've been used to seeing the old technologies. But this was a real test. And after this, I mean, we got an order from the guys for sure. Some other interesting numbers came out as well. True positives on the matches that we had. We had a 99.9% .9 hit rate. Every match was exactly the same person that it matched it for. Our closest competitor clocked out at 70%, right? Look at the false alarms a day. We were at almost one false alarm per day in an airport environment. Competitors are like 40 to 100. Okay, so false alarms is everyone's biggest nightmare. You don't want that because at that point, you might as well, I don't want the system here, right? It's taking up too much time. But what I'm saying is in a mass crowd environment like an airport, if we're able to commit to such numbers, you can't ask for anything better, right? And just the disparity between our closest competitors sort of shows you how far ahead this technology is and how well it works in the real world. Yeah, so depending on the use case, depending on the environment, you can adjust how accurate you want the matching to be. So if you want, if you're okay with having, let's say, some false positives, or you can lower the accuracy if you just want to get everyone's data. But if you want it to be, no, it has to be this person, I need that guarantee. You can increase the threshold for the camera. That way, all your matches are guaranteed to be exact and accurate. Okay? So I was talking about the mobile app. Uh, I'll show you a demo of this right after, but um, I have it right here. I can do it for you guys from this phone. There is a little video I can play for you in the meantime, though. Um, That's our CO Max. Well, I know that China is using Web Map, right? Everyone is. So, okay, so I'll put it to this way. All new technology that's developed in the world, 
is first developed for a military application. We all know that, right? What we see in the shop today, that's old technology, right? Yes, China's been using it. But yes, there's other governments too. They use it at the borders for security. Just because they don't tell you about it doesn't mean they're not using it. Like look at the case with um, Oxford Properties at that shopping mall in Calgary, right? Um, so, you know, they have these Wi-Fi analytic systems and softwares, right? In a way, that is also a breach of privacy. Why? Because if you connect to the Wi-Fi in a mall, they can track where you are, your location, how long you've spent at a certain place. They have all this data. So, you know, really, I mean, it's, it's a gray area. The only thing that we don't know is that people are doing it. But you can. It's called analytics. That's how you use data to make your business better, right? It's just that facial recognition is a little bit of a scary topic for most because of those Tom Cruise movies. But it actually can be used for good. That's the whole idea here is we're trying to make it more commercial, more accessible to the real world. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, access control is a very simple deployment. I want to talk a little bit about it because you've seen how fast this thing works. You've seen how accurately it works. You've seen the matching capabilities of our software. Okay. I put together some videos for some live deployments on the field that we have today. Uh, let's see the first one here. That is a camera mounted on a turnstile. There's a small little camera here on the turnstile. And when the lady walks up to it, it does a detection, a match, and it opens a gate for her. Seamless, right? A better application is this one here. Again, turnstile. This is a lot better because you have a screen, and there's, this is the camera that's actually showing you what it can see, right? So as you can see, the person's walking up to the turnstile. Detection, recognize, gates open, he walks in. Seamless. Right? So this is a combination of a number of things. Accuracy, speed, and even the, the reporting on the back end from the software saying that, hey, look, this is what's happening. Right? Uh, here's another one. This is pretty interesting. A person's walking out of the gate and a person standing there waiting to get in. Okay? Walks in. As soon as the person steps within range, Detection, recognition, boom, come in. Seamless. We're doing a couple of tests right now at a number of sites. Um, a great application is also in not really access control, but more like parking solutions. Uh, gates, construction sites, the visitor entry gates. There's so many people coming in and out. People today are still using pen and paper to write down names and numbers to keep a log of who came in, what happened, right? We tested this at a gate, a guard gate, um, the cabin, there's a vehicle barrier gate, and the contractors, they drive in, they have to stop, present their ID and all that stuff, two person, and get verified, and then they come in. We used the camera instead, right? So we put a camera on the guard cabin over there, and the guy drives in, we made a match from a moving vehicle, right? That's the application they're testing right now in BC. Um, they want to use this to verify the visitors. The way the guard, I mean, the guard costs, what, 100 grand a year, right? They want to reduce some of the costs. So they want to automate this process. That's one application. Here's another interesting video of a detection through a car for this guy. He's a suspect, but that detection was made through a car, moving vehicle. And this, uh, like I'm telling everybody, this is my favorite pick. This is my detection of the year. The guy cannot even be seen, and there we found him, we matched him. Well, that's a camera, that's software, right? So when it comes to the capabilities of this, it's really cool. And it can go as far as you want it to. So you would combine typically something like this with one of our other products called Sesame. Sesame is a mobile app for authentication and onboarding, okay? So what you can do with Sesame, you can take out your phone, you could scan your driver's license or your passport, it will read the picture, it will read the data, it'll also read any security tokens that it's supposed to look for on the ID, and then it'll match that uh, by turning on the selfie camera on your phone, it'll record a three second video, it'll confirm you're a real person and you're alive. So liveness detection, right? And then it'll match the two, the data from the ID, and authenticate that with the picture on the from the selfie. And so it's a verified enrollment or registration, right? 
we have a bank in Israel that's using this to allow customers to open up bank accounts with them from wherever they are. Download the app from the App Store, have your ID ready, scan it, register, you're done. One application. Another application, think back to the visitor gates. So my question was, how do these people register to become a visitor? Normally, there's an email that somebody sends them. They have to register the license plate or something, share some ID. It's a tedious process. Imagine doing the same thing but using Sesame, where if you want to be a visitor, download the app, register yourself, scan your ID. As soon as you do that, it will automatically upload your photo to the camera system that's at the gate. Done. It's just an image, right? So what this does is it creates an ecosystem based on AI-related solutions. Okay, the fact is we have the juice down. The facial recognition part is the easy bit. We can do it on a phone, we can do it on a camera, we can do it any which way you want to do it. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a quick video here for Sesame. It's the exact same thing that I told you, but that's how it works. Any questions on that? Um, as in? Right. Right. Okay, you're right. That's a good point. And that's the uh, reason why Sesame is not a solution. It's an SDK. So you can tune the workflow depending on how you want to communicate the data, right? So normally what we do in such cases is once the Sesame verification is complete, either over the Wi-Fi network or the cell phone data, it will send that image to a server wherever your HQ is. And that server it will populate in the suspect list as a whitelisted person for that specific camera. So it's, it's a tedious workflow, but it's an SDK, so it can be tuned according to what you need to do, right? So it is a customizable solution. So I mean, that's good and bad. The good thing is, yes, you can do it. The challenging thing is, it's always a custom solution for every customer. So it, it needs some time to develop, maybe like a month or two, right? <clears throat> but that's a great question because you're seeing the challenges that come up with such things, right? So this tells me that you've already understood that, okay, look, the facial recognition part is not my immediate concern. You're already focused on the other stuff that comes behind it, right? Is there any way to add to the SDK? Yeah, our SDK is available if you want to do any work with it. Um, now, data, shoot. So, of course, everyone's got video. Everyone's got all these cool analytics things going on. Fine and dandy. We're not trying to become the next big analytics company. No. We specialize in utilizing meaningful data from all the information that we get, right? So you've seen facial recognition is one of those things. Insights is our platform that we're going to be launching in a few months from now. I've already seen the prototype and the beta test. It's amazing. I mean, designed specifically for retail, casino, uh, large public spaces, stadiums, airports, right? This is the application that will help them drive additional value from their video systems and from the data that they have on site. Okay, so it's got cool things like, you know, gaze estimation, heat maps, uh, gender identification, etc. For example, a quick snapshot of what it's going to look like, gender identification of a video, right? So all the males are in purple, the females are in beige or pink or brown, whatever your color choice is. Um, something even beyond that called uh, gesture recognition, where it can map out which way the person is looking. 
Okay, mm -hmm. now it looks cool on video. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it looks really cool. But look at the application. So a marketing person will look at this like, okay, I know which this 